Yeah, I don't know how many more episodes I'm going to do of this season because we're middling in mid-table. Like, we're not really threatening the European places and I'm not in danger of being relegated anytime soon. I'm not really sure how many more episodes of this season I'm going to do. Thank you to the comments that he left in the last episode. They were quite enjoyable to read. You know, uh, I read all your achievements. Some of them were very good. Some of them were just a bit... Well, they, they weren't great. That's all I'm going to say. They just weren't great. I don't know why you told me that. Now, in the last episode, we took on West Ham United away from home. And after being 2-1 down at halftime, Steve Mounier completed his perfect hat-trick as we came back and won by three goals to two. And at that stage, I thought to myself, yeah, you know, Steve Mounier is going to end up top goal scorer because at the time when he scored the hat trick, he became joint top goal scorer in the league. That was until he got injured and then that coincided with a shocking run of form after that. Now, following that West Ham 3-2 win, we took on Liverpool at home and drew them 0-0 in a game which didn't have too many highlights. Uh, we then took on Everton at home after that and we lost by two goals to nil. Some sloppy goals we gave away. I couldn't really do much about it. We then followed up with an away trip to Chelsea and after Trezeguet gave us this lead with this great free kick from about 35 yards out, we collapsed in the second half and Aiden Hazard won the game for Chelsea with this penalty. We then took on Cardiff at home and after Joshua Onoma gave them the lead with seven minutes left on the clock, they played a long ball over the top of our defence and after James Tompkins miscontrolled the ball, Kenneth Sahore stole the ball and made it 2-0 to Cardiff. And after going 2-1 down to Wolves after 20 minutes, Maximilian Philip equalised to make it 2-2 uh, only two minutes later. And then three minutes later, Morgan Gibbs-White then fired in to make it 3-2 to Wolves. So 3-2 after 25 minutes. It was pretty insane. Uh, only three minutes after that, though, Oli Berg ran towards the defence, and after two of his shots were blocked, Sergio Regulon ran into the box and fired it past the keeper to make it 3-3 before half-time. As we moved into the second half, we then took the initiative and then started attacking Wolves uh, more often, and Neil Morpé then scored to make it 4-3 after only 60 minutes, and then only five minutes later, Nick Powell came off the bench oh, in his first appearance in probably a few months, actually, and then fired it in to make it 5-3 to us and uh, give us all three points. And and that bad run of form recently has seen us stay in 12th position in the league. And a win over Manchester United away from home could see us go up the table towards 10th. I doubt it's going to happen though. After our win away at West Ham, I looked at the social media again because I like to see if anyone's slagging us off or positively slagging us off. And uh, Isla Bryan said on social media that Mounier put in a good performance and it could have been better. How can the performance be better? Please tell me. Wilfred Zaha also damaged his kneecap once again. I mean, that's the second time he's got that injury in the last two months. I feel like he needs some new ones. I feel like we're just not going to have a team by the end of March. I'll end up having to play the kids or something. The Carabao Cup is also finished for the season and Brighton, who are currently in the championship and top of the championship, shall I say, won the whole competition. I went and went to check the team to see who they had in it. Chancel and Bemba placed with them, who was on loan at us last season, had joined Brighton on a permanent transfer, and now he's won more trophies than he did here. That's not good at all. Thomas Tuchel was also sacked recently as Chelsea boss and I went to see who the favourite was. John Terry's the favourite. The same John Terry that has taken Aston Villa to the bottom of the Premier League with two wins all season. Oh yeah, that one. <laughs> and if we didn't have enough injuries as it was, Alex Oxley chamberlain then twisted his knee before we took on Newcastle. We also signed a new under-23 sports scientist recently from Middlesbrough, Peter Hood. And I mean, looking at his profile, he looks like a top lad. <laughs> Although his haircut is still stuck in 2007. Four of my players also got bonuses recently because we've avoided relegation successfully. Even Cameron Jerome got 18,000. The guy has played one game all season. I would probably say that no one has actually made 18,000 much easier than that. Oli Berg also scored his first goal for Scotland and it's a great moment for me. Like, uh, he's like my own son. Although my own son wouldn't be Scottish because that would be a disappointment already before he was born. And he also thanked me for getting him the opportunity to play for Scotland and score his first goal. And uh, I mean, I don't know who's cutting the onions around here, but it's really hurting my eyes. Neil Morpé also got injured. I mean, it's becoming a given now that we're going to get injuries, isn't it? In the 5-3 win over Wolverhampton Wanderers, uh, Maximilian Philip also scored his first goal in over 10 hours of football. I mean, how have we scored this many goals this season when all my strikers are going on goal droughts at certain times of the season? And if you wanted to know, Neil Morpé also ended his goal drought after 10 hours of football as well against the same opposition. And that 5-3 win over Wolves also was our highest score 
scoring game in the Premier League so far. And people say I'm not an entertaining football manager. Watch when we uh, shit out a nil-nil draw at Old Trafford now. And now we move into our game against Manchester United away. Now, after the 5-3 win against Wolves in the last match, I do stick with the same system that we played against them. Connor Cody returns to the side to take his place as centre-back alongside Christopher Ayer. Yusuf Atal also replaces Aaron Wambasaka, a right-back as Aaron Wambasaka is currently injured. We do stick with the midfield four of Zaha McGinn and Kunku and Burke. And Maximilian Philip and Neil Morpé also lead the line for us as Steve Mounier is still currently injured for another three weeks. I'm not going to lie to you, it's scary playing at Old Trafford again. I'm playing against one of the best teams in the country who are still managed by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer for some reason, and I've decided this is a good idea. I really don't think these things through, do I? Although saying that, we have played some pretty easy teams in the last few episodes, so I need a bit of a challenge. I mean, those last few episodes being like three weeks ago, but... They still count. After about 11 minutes, the first highlight of the game came across and we had a corner and I thought we were going to score from it, but imagine my shock, a United counter-attack from it. But Lorenzo Insigne cut inside from the left wing and played the ball into our box for Usman then Bele to hit the post and then we were on the counter-attack straight after that. And then Neil Morpé decided to run straight at the United defence and then found Wilfred Zaha, whose shot was blocked but found his way to Oli Berg to fire us into a shock lead at Old Trafford. That was until VAR decided to take a stand against that. I mean, imagine my shock, another refereeing decision going United's way at Old Trafford. It's like we're back in 2013 all over again. And we certainly didn't let that disallowed goal affect us as Anthony Marshall then crossed the ball into the box for Elwa to fire it past our keeper and to give United a 1-0 lead. That is very annoying. The fact that I can't say his name as well is incredibly annoying. Elwa wa. Iowa. A few minutes later, the ball was played to Nabil Bentaleb on the edge of the box, but he fired it wide. I mean, how are United only 1-0 up? I mean, it's not what I should be saying as the Huddersfield manager. But of course, into the second half we went and we were 2-0 down pretty much quickly as uh, Paul Pogba fired in a free kick from 30 yards out. I mean, what is the point? Why did I pick this game? Why? It was time to switch things up and I went from the 4-4-2 to a 4-2-3-1 and sent on Nick Powell who's played once this season, thinking that he was going to change the game for me. And then Yusuf Atal down the right hand side putting a great ball into the box for Wilfred Zaha to head it against the post against his former club. And then I decided to make another change as I sent on the injured uh, Steve Mounier on for Maximilian Philip, and it really worked as just before the substitution Maximilian Philip then fired us back into the game. And just when I thought maybe we have a chance of getting back into the game, Connor Cody then got sent off for two bookable offences and then we conceded an injury time to lose 3-1. You hate to see it. But it's not like our season's just going to collapse now, is it? Because, uh, well, we're not going to get relegated and we're not going to threaten Europe. So, I mean, what what was the point of this episode, really? Put